the question is, why do demons manifest in the diabolically afflicted? That, that's the question. Wouldn't it be, it'd be better to get souls to hell by just remaining hidden? Uh, demons manifest not because they want to, but because they're forced to. In the same way, like I just told you, a suspect running from the cops who hides behind the dumpster until you, you, you shine the light on him, he has to do something now, fight or flight. Same with the demons. They will hide until they're forced to manifest. Then they will either yield or combat. Every time he manifests, the demon manifests, he's giving you information about himself. Then a book is built on this data. Again, it's like chasing a guy who always runs from the police. He's a creature of habit. He'll follow the same pattern. The diabolical are extremely patterned and will react exactly the same way. The same demon will act differently as he manifests in different people because every person is different and the demon will adapt to their personality. Demons are the most structured creatures in the universe. They're the most ordered creature in the cosmos. In response to the sacred, they pattern out. This means... That this means if you do this, demons will do that. In other words, their pr behavior is predictable. Here's another question from the audience. Another email question to War College. We know that demons can be in... We know that houses, excuse me, can Hello? be in... Ah, Kyle, we were worried about you. <laughs> we, we thought you got taken hostage by the, the pro boards or something. <laughs> don't, don't don't pay the ransom i'll escape <laughs> we're saying where's kyle the pro boards went to his house and took him took him hostage glad you're back it's, brother uh, it's been storming up here and so um i think that there's probably been some some damage to cell towers and things like that because this is just really sketchy i hope it lasts Okay, so let me ask the question. You were talking about a bishop's asking you, what can he do in terms of binding prayers over the diocese? Are there generic prayers that he can do? Specific prayers? What would you advise the bishop from, from Australia? So the bishop from Australia, pray as a prince because you are a prince of the church and the flock and those that are in your care, those souls in your care are your subjects. If you were a coronated uh, ruler of a duchy or um, of, a, of a kingdom, how would you pray? Pray that same way, because that's exactly what, uh, that's exactly what this configuration is. Uh, pray that the Lord shower your subjects with grace and that no demons interfere with their ability to receive that grace and be reconciled with God the Father. I think that we've lost this understanding that the bishops are the spiritual princes of the church. They are the stewards uh, of the sacrament. And so they want to distribute the sacraments. They want to save souls. Um, and so they want to bind anything that interferes with that. Kyle, when you say that the bishop obviously should should pray in precatory type specific prayers, right? I mean, I, 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 I bless, I bind, right? He should... He should pay the imprecatory type of praise, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. He, from the demonic standpoint, they see him as Peter, as James, as John. He is the apostle. Uh, this is part of, you know, this is a beauty of, of uh, reclamation theology. Remember, you learned apostolic succession. You learned that there is an unbroken uh, line of hands on shoulders that goes from Peter to this bishop. This bishop's shadow is the shadow of Peter. This bishop's voice is the voice of Peter. This bishop is the apostle in Australia. Kyle, would, it would, would also be safe or recommended that a bishop can pray chapter 3 over his diocese, you know, on a couple times a year? I think it's, yeah, I think it's, it's very recommended. Jesse, very quietly, there are several bishops in the United States who have exercised their diocese. Um, and we, Father Ripperger has developed a, a paraliturgy for this purpose, um, and I'd be happy to, if they email, I'll uh, be happy to get it to the bishops or the bishops' offices that want to use this. 
but in many, many locations, especially with the um, proliferation of witchcraft and Satanism, the formal uh, exorcism of a diocese and then the, um, the blessing of that diocese, marking the corners of the diocese, geographical corners of the diocese with, with blocks of blessed salt. The, these things are happening, and they're happening around the country, not just in isolated instances, but more and more bishops, good bishops, are picking up on this. That's good to hear, Kyle. Tell, just uh, some people may, first time they ever hear something about uh, these blocks of salt in the fourth corners of a house or property or a diocese. Repeat that one more time. What's the theology behind this? It's a sacramental, correct? It is a sacramental, and the salt lasts much, much longer uh, than water, which evaporates. But that's one of the uh, different efficacies of, of water. Exercised water is exercised, and part of that blessing is there is a salt. Uh, exercised salt is d- sprinkled into the water, so that when the water evaporates, it still leaves a signature, salt being a, a more lasting element that doesn't not subject to such rapid evaporation. But all of these sacramentals have a metaphysical and have a real um, methodology of working, and they do work. And the diabolical knows it and knows it very well. And so that's why salt marks the geographical corners of the blessing, and and the bishop marking his area, if you will, um, is very, very important in spiritual warfare. The other thing that a bishop should do at least once a year is some type of Eucharistic procession. Uh, public Eucharistic procession. He should celebrate and and participate in that at least once a year. Um, this is very very effective in spiritual warfare. And I know I know a lot of them do that right now. I've seen it. I've been keeping track around the country for the last couple of years. An annual Eucharistic procession. 